Hello and welcome. So we're going to be working with React Hooks in what I call Hooks Shop. And Hooks Shop is a shop with a shopping cart where we can keep track of state. We're going to be working on the use state hook and we're going to touch on the use effect hook. So let's get started on that now by going to terminal. Putting on a new terminal, I'm going to just put this on my desktop. So I'll cd to desktop and then npx gate dash react app. And after that, I'm going to write hooks shop. Let's try out our installation, make sure it works. So CD hooks shop yarn start. And this should work for us. Great. All right, now let's get rid of everything we don't need. I'm going to open the folder that I know I have on the desktop called hook shop. And to get rid of the files we don't need, it's the CSS, the test, the SVG, the service worker, and the setup test, and we'll move those to the trash. And then we'll quickly fix the app by getting rid of the stuff we trashed, which is right up here. Uh, we'll just return a div, so get rid of the headers and everything like that. And we don't have to worry about the class name either. Let's return that div. Save that, and we'll also have an index here that has the service worker we got rid of, get rid of that. It has it here as well, and the index.css. Now that that's all gone, we should be able to run the app again. Go to terminal, new terminal, and then yarn start. And here we are with our empty React app. That's what we were looking for. Now our empty React app is only going to return one component inside this div here. So inside this div, we're just going to write shop. So there we are, and let's make that self-closing. And let's import shop. We haven't made it yet, but import shop from, and I'm going to put it in a folder named undercase shop, and shop will be uppercase shop. And we could save that. That'll definitely break it because it doesn't exist. So in the SRC, let's make a folder, undercase shop. Let's make a file, uppercase shop.js, and we'll get started inside of there. Now here's where we'll do everything that we want to do for this entire lesson. So import React, and we're also going to import, now this is in curly braces, use state and use effect. We won't be using use effect too quickly, but we will get to it by the end and it'll be very, very useful to us. So let's const shop inside of there. We'll just return a div just like before, uh, just div. And out of here, let's export default and uppercase shop. There we are. Now we're set up. It should still say nothing, but if we were to return a div here like so, we should be able to write shop on that page. Yes, we did. Okay, so this is what's being displayed as the app, and we want to dig into hooks today. So in shop, what type of shop are we? We're going to be a video game shop and we're going to have a const called items and it'll equal an array and each item in the array will be an object like so. So open up an array and an object. I want you to type in ID. That's going to be the ID of the product. It'll be ID number one. And the name of the first product we sell in the video game shop is Overwatch. And the price is, let's say $20. Don't put a dollar sign, we'll handle that programmatically later. Let's do another one, we'll do ID2, common name. Uh, let's do another game called Minecraft with a price of 32. And let's do one more game, ID of course three, and name, let's do Fortnite all one word games. And let's make sure we give that an odd number price. We have all even numbers, 51. So there we are, those are the items in our shop. This is what we sell, this is everything we sell. 
Now we want to list these items in our shop so people can see what our shop sells. So we're going to make a list and we're going to do it with const list items, we will call it. And that's going to take items. It's going to map over them, items.map for each element, so el arrow. And then we want to open up parentheses and inside of the parentheses is where we'll do all of our JSX. We'll start with the div. It'll have a key and you need a key for all of these. So it needs to be a unique key. So element.id. Here's the div that will show one item and it'll show each of the items the same way. Now the first div that we're making will have the key of the first item, which is ID of one and then ID of two and ID of three. That's all it's saying right here. You won't see this on the screen. So now that we have that set, let's say what we want the list to look like. Inside the list, I want it to have, and I'm going to do this with string concatenation. So just go ahead and open up some curly braces. Back ticks is the way to go for this. Dollar sign, curly braces, el.name. So that's the element. So if it was ID one, this first element, the name would be Overwatch. Next, we want to do two dollar signs. Now this is a little confusing. Remember, one of the dollar signs is going to be an escape character. So we want the other dollar sign to actually exist. So element.price, which will be on this first one, 20. And oh, make sure your back ticks don't end right there. That's the worst case scenario. Great. And now we should have our list items displaying both of those things. I'm just going to put it where I have shop now. I'm going to put list items. There we go. Overwatch 20, Minecraft 32, Fortnite 51. Let's make a button we could press. We could add things to the cart and we could put it in the same div because I want these all to be in line anyway. So let's make an input in that div and the input will have a type of submit because we want it to be a button. We'll have a value, that's the name of it. I want the value to be add. And then it needs an on click. So what happens when you click the button? And for that, I'm just going to do a function that I have not made yet called add to cart and I'm going to pass it the element so we could add whatever it is that we clicked to the cart. And now we could close the input and we're good there. We need to make this function add to cart because it doesn't exist yet. I'd like to put it above the list items right here. We'll put it right here, add to cart. So const add to cart, that'll be a fat arrow function, but it's taking in element. Remember it's taking in element. And inside add to cart, we're going to finally use the use state hook. So right now we have no cart. We have these items, this const with all the items, but we don't have a cart. So let's make a cart const. And now here's how you use use state, open up an array and write cart, then comma set cart. Oh, make sure it's undercase set, uppercase cart. Perfect. Equal use state and the cart is going to be whatever you put inside this right here. Inside of this, you could do a string if you'd like it to be, and you could write something for the cart, but the cart is going to need to be an array, and I'm going to make it an empty array to start with. Save that, and you have your first use state hook made, where you made a variable called cart, you assigned an empty array to it, and you have set cart in order to manipulate the cart variable. Now let's go down to our add to cart and work on that real quick. So this is our function for adding something to our cart. And all we need to do is set cart and we'll make the array again. We'll destructure the cart into the array. So anything that's in the cart can stay in the cart. And then we also want to pass in the new element is going to be added to the array. So save that. And this should be working in order to see it. I'm just going to console.log cart. Now to see our console command option, I will get it open for you right here. And let's add this to the cart. Now we have a cart with Overwatch in it and $20. Let's try Fortnite. Should be two things in the cart now. 
We have Overwatch and Fortnite in the cart. Perfect. That worked great. Let's move back to our code and keep working on it. I want to display my cart. So I have these list items and that's how I display my list. Now copy all of this and we're going to make something called cart items. And it's going to take cart and map over it and do the exact same thing, except here we're going to have something called remove from cart. And remove from cart is going to do this. Const remove from cart equals, and it's going to take in the element, do a fat arrow function. There's two ways we could do this. We can mutate the state, which will get this done in one line and then it'll look great. Or we could hard copy it and then put that into the state, which I actually prefer to do. I think that's a better move. So just do a quick let uh, copy equal, actually let's say let hard copy equal, and then it'll be the state. So dot, 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 cart. Okay, so we have the entire cart hard copied right here. Now, hard copy will equal hard copy dot filter, and we're going to call it cart item, just singular, where the cart item dot id is not equal to element dot id. So this is asking the copy of the cart to filter out any and return any cart item that's not equal to the element.id. So what it's saying is the element that was passed into the remove from cart needs to be removed from the array. Then we'll simply say set cart and we'll pass in hard copy. Great, with that handled, let's put cart items into our return. So first of all, let's make this return go multiple lines by just wrapping it in parentheses like so. And we have a div with list items. Let's put a div around that. It's going to be more than one thing on this page. So let's div the entire page. And then I actually just wanna write, um, how about right here above everything, we could write store and that's everything that's available. And after list items, we'll do another div. It'll say cart and all uppercase. After that, another div and inside there, finally the cart items. So here we are, oh, I put, a error right here, there we go. Okay, so we have our store, we have our cart. Let's add something to our cart, there it is, perfect. Add something else and let's see if our function to remove from the cart is working as well. It is, it's working perfectly. Okay, so we have our add and remove functionality in there. Now, what happens if we add the same thing twice? You could see that we get an issue because we are using the same key. But you could solve this by adding UUID or not letting them enter the same item twice. And we're just not going to let them enter the same item twice. And this will let us make an alert system, which is another good way to use use state. So let's make our alert system. We'll go up to the top. Const alert comma set alert equals use state and now this state isn't going to be an empty array it's going to be an empty string because the alert is always going to be a string all we need to do is just put this right into our project i'm going to put it right after cart items div alert and before it it'll say alert message so we know what's coming on over there. Alert, so the alert message should read right there, perfect. And now we want to be able to populate this alert anytime something is added that's already in the cart. So I mean, if we add Overwatch twice, we should have an alert and it should say it's already in the cart and it can't be added again. So let's do that. We'll head into our add to cart. 
let's let a variable called add it, and that's just asking the question, should I add it? We'll set it equal to true. And I'm going to do a for loop because I think these are the easiest to understand when we're doing these quick videos like we're doing here. So a for loop here in order to check for this is going to look like so. For let i equal zero. When i is less than cart dot length i plus plus. And in the body of that, we'll do our work, which is very simple, just a quick statement, a quick if statement. If cart at i dot id is triple equal to element that's being passed in right here, dot id, what we'll do is we'll change add it to equal false. Now, what we can do right here is say if add it. So if added is true, we'll set the cart like so. And after that, we could just write else set alert. And in there, let's do some string concatenation as well. So back ticks, dollar sign, curly braces, element.name, that's the name of the product. Then after that is already in your cart. Okay, now we've set an alert if something is being added to the cart and is already in the cart. Let's take a look and make sure that's working. There we are, Overwatch is already in your cart. But now when I click Minecraft, it still says Overwatch is already in your cart. Let's fix that and we're going to do that by setting the state again. So here, if added, set cart and do that. But we also wanna set the state, so let's wrap this. Oh, we should be wrapping that in curly braces. Sorry about that if you did that. It'll be set cart and then set alert and the alert will be empty string again. Now let's see if that's working. We're going to add Minecraft twice. Minecraft's already in your cart. All right, but I want Fortnite and the alert message is gone. Perfect. We want the same thing to happen right here. This same thing to happen if there is a remove from cart. So every time something removes from cart, we're going to set the hard copy and then set the alert back to that. So that if we have an alert and we go, you know what, take Minecraft out anyway, now the alert is gone. So we are setting the state several different times here and it's really that simple. It's a quick set alert and then what you want in there. Now. I have one more part of this app that I want to work on. We have a cart, but we do not have a total. Now, I want a total, so I'm going to go back over here and we're going to work on the cart total. Const cart total, and then set cart total. Set that equal to use state, and put zero in there because it'll always start at zero dollars for the cart total. We don't need to console log the cart anymore. It's on the screen, but I do want to get the cart total on the screen. I'll put that above the alert message. So div cart total. And before that, let's write total and the dollar sign, see what it looks like. There we go, we have total zero dollars because that's what we set it to at the beginning, a zero. So let's make our totaler function. I'll do it right up here, right above add to cart, const total equals a fat arrow function and inside of there, we're going to do a little bit of work. So let total val equals zero. That's our starting point. And we'll do a for loop. We can do this with reduce as well, a little bit quicker. If you'd like to use reduce, go ahead. But for the video, I rather use loops because most people do understand them. If uh, let i equal to zero, i is less than cart dot length. Well, CSS rule, cart dot length. i plus plus. 
All right, all we need to do is have total val plus equal card at i dot price. So add all the prices together and store it in total val. Now after the for loop is where we'll set cart total. And all we gotta do is pass in total val. Perfect. If things were all working synchronously, we could just say, hey, we're adding to the cart. We have if added, set cart, and we put it in the cart. And then we should just be able to call total as a function, and it should work. Let's take a look. That didn't change the total at all. So then what if we do one more? That did change the total. It seems like the total is one behind. And that is an issue with React, but there is a very, very, very good fix for this. So instead of being one behind, what we want to do is use our use effect. That's right here. So our use effect is going to be able to total every time something is changed in the state labeled cart, and we're going to make it do that. So above total, we're going to do our use effect. It's going to be a very short little function. So use effect takes in a function. So in use effect, you want to do a function, arrow function like so. I want to give it total as a function. And now after this, comma and make an array. This is called a dependency array. Now the dependency array says to use effect every time something changes in what I give you, and I'm going to give it cart, every time something changes in cart, fire off, do the use effect function that's inside here. So every time something changes in cart, total is going to be run. And we'll save that. And I wanna get rid of it from where I put it, right here. Let's see total work now. Total is 20, 52, 103, and let's change these to say remove, huh? They say add still. Real quick, go down to the bottom where it says add, remove. And let's do that again. So there we are. Now we have our removes and this should total our way down as well. It does. We can't add the same one. If we remove and there's a message, it goes away. That's everything we wanted to cover with our use state and use effect hooks. We made a small little shopping cart and a store just on one page without any styling, but it works perfectly. So thanks for being with me on this one and stick with me because we're doing quite a bit and quite a bit of the shopping cart style stuff because I want to get into Stripe next. I want to do the entire Stripe API. I think it's really important to know that. So I'm going to learn it and do a bunch of videos on it. So follow me to there and I can't wait to see you there. Take care.